something very special is about to happen today. For this happy couple, please sing lustily and loudly. Have you all got hymn books? Would you like to know what I was saying? <laughs> well, it's private. <laughs> so, please come up. Yeah. Just all, please, uh, just be seated just now. Thank you. So, um, formally yeah. now, could I, can I welcome you to this very, very important day for Kerry Ann and, and, and for Stephen. Um, it's no secret to say that, that this, is, this is a day long, long anticipated, and it's not been without its issues getting here because of the dreadful COVID. And, um, and I know, I know how much. Uh, both Stephen and, and, and Kerry Ann uh, have looked forward to, to today, as well as their families. Uh, it's a great day for them. But I also know that the, the, the bitter disappointment that was experienced in having to reschedule and reschedule. And it actually got to the stage where I couldn't remember what date <laughs> we were being married. And I think I had to ask you uh, a couple of times. But the day has come and the sun is out and you look fantastic, both of you. And um, I'd like you to do something now, which I don't think you, you ever do. I just want you to stand and have a wee look to see who's all here. Can you do that? And I think we should give them a little <laughs> welcome. So, you see, sometimes you can turn around and look at me now, sadly, and sit there. But sometimes I think couples don't really realise you know, how, how many people are here and who's here. And, and maybe even now that just kind of went over your head. But nevertheless, look, you know, a very large number of people who are here, um, not only to, to enjoy themselves, but to support you. And that in itself. And grandparents are here on, on both sides. And, and that's a great thing, that, that they are here. 
for those who can be. So without any further ado, can I ask you to stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And so, Kerry Ann and Stephen, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you together with your families and your friends as today you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. For believers, God is the source of love and fidelity because God is love. And let us pray to the Father that he may grant you your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your hopes, prayers and expectations. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to Jesus <clears throat> said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt becomes tasteless, what can make it salty again? It is good for nothing. It can only be thrown out to be trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hilltop cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp to put it under a tub. They put it on the lampstand where it shines for everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine in the sight of all, so that seeing your good works, they may give the praise to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. So just very briefly, please be seated. Stephen, I was going to say, yeah, mm. don't sit on your book. Ah, nearly. <laughs> what to do is give your book to your side man. That's the best thing. Thank you. So, Kenny Ann and Stephen, here we are, at long last. And I was just thinking there, in that first hymn, which you chose. You're involved in the act of, of making memories. That's what you're doing. So they're your memories today, but behind you, in the second row on either side, and then in the third row on either side, are your parents. <clears throat> and happily, a set of grandparents for you, Stephen, and happily, most happily for you, for me as well. Your gran is, is here, who I know uh, in my happy time in, in, in West Colton. And she was just reminding me uh, of various people we both know, uh, which is lovely to see her, and you're looking wonderful. Uh, but you, will, you, the grandparents, you will have memories. Huh? You'll have memories when you sat where your respective son and daughter-in-law are of their weddings and all the hopes you had for them however many years afterwards. And, and here is this third generation of your family. And what about you that are married? What are your memories of today when you look at Kerry and you look at Stephen? And you think about when you sat where they sat. Or maybe you are anticipating this day. But maybe you haven't told your other half <laughs> that you are anticipating at this day. But something very special is about to happen today. And you, my dear friends, you are privileged. You're privileged to be here. Because they, Stephen and Kerry, and they want you here. That's how important you are to them for this day. And yes, you'll go up to the view, and I bet you sing up there. <laughs> it's amazing what a few sherrys does to lubricate. But I know you'll sing the second one um, as loudly as you sung the first one, I hope better. But these, these are important, these are important things that we experience, these memories. Because you see, we can't stop, we can't stop the clock. It's been videoed, and later on, you'll see the video, and, and you can relive it. But that's reliving a past moment. This is to be in the moment for both of you. 
And the, the, the privilege that you, all of you, are about to witness is the exchange of vows so, so solemn, so solemn and so profound. Carry on, I take you for my wife, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. Stephen, I take you for my husband, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. They are extraordinary, powerful words. If you have ever seen, and it's pretty old now, very old in fact, the, 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 the great Hugh Grant from Four Weddings and a Funeral, have you seen it? God, I feel very old when I mention this, but if you've ever seen it or catch it on YouTube, but what's extraordinary, Richard Curtis, who wrote, who wrote the screenplay, and he also wrote Love Actor, which I think is slightly better. Um, but what Curtis's great gift is that he has a tremendous insight into us, into human nature. So in, 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 in the first wedding of Four Weddings and a Funeral, Hugh Grant, who basically plays the same type of person in every film he's in, but he, as the best man, he's standing and he, he's making a speech at the first wedding. Because obviously there's four weddings, so the title gives it away, this is the first. And, and he, he says, and so Curtis wrote this, and I thought, that, that's clever, as an insight. In character, Hugh Grant says, I, I stand in awesome wonder at the vows that whoever it was made to each other. I stand in awesome wonder. Why did he say that? Because as the film unfolds, he knows he can't, he can't commit. Now, if you haven't seen the film, I'm really sorry to spoil it for you. But he, he can't commit. And yet today, here we have this commitment for this young couple. And Callie, happily somewhere, I don't know where it is, and his granddad's name. And the fruit of love, and a blessing to you both. So that, that's why I began by saying, memories, you're making memories. And memories which will live long, I hope, in your psyche. That you'll look back on this as your parents, as your grandparents will look back. As every single one of you who's married. And then there'll come the exchange of rings which Mark has, but I'm not coming down for him to say it's okay. <laughs> but the, ring, the rings are not necessary. But those of you who wear, are wearing a wedding ring, can you have a look at it now, please? Just have a look at your wedding ring. Don't be bashful. If you haven't got one, well, maybe, maybe Santa will bring you one soon. <laughs> but if you're looking at it, I'd like you just to think, just think about the moment that was placed on your finger. Mm. And just think about what your hopes were. What your expectations were. Think about that day when that ring was slipped on your finger. And think about how hard you have worked together to achieve there, because that's what you two are about to do. And the ring, as a symbol, has no beginning and no end. It's a perfect circle. And it's a very good symbol for marriage. That your love will be burnished and prolonged in that never broken circle of marriage and of promise, of expectation and of gift and, dare I say also, of disappointment and frustration. Because they are also part and parcel of the tapestry of life. Because none of us go through life without the disappointments as well. It's about how we rise to them. I was intrigued, I was very, very intrigued when I said to Katie about the reading. I really was intrigued. I've rarely heard that, that reading at a wedding. Did you know, did you hear? A silent wife, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did pick it. Uh, apparently it's a gift. <laughs> a silent wife is a gift. No price can be put on a well-trained cat. I, I don't think you'd get away with writing that now, to be honest. 
and living in hope. You to be living in hope. But it's also the beginning, happy the husband of a really good wife. That great counterbalance of the perfect relationship. Which doesn't come automatically as anybody here who's married will tell you. It comes. There's no magic in a successful marriage. What makes a successful marriage is a love which is altruistic, which goes beyond self. And that is what you are now fully embarking on with, with God's blessing. Once again, behind you, in those rows, you've got a, a really rich tradition to fall back on, which you probably have at some stage in the past. But learn from them. Your mum and dad, happily here. Your grandparents, grandmother, happily here. Wisdom. There is wisdom. Do not ignore the wisdom that is there as we look forward now to you standing to exchange these central and important vows together. I wish you every grace and every blessing as you are about to exchange these vows to each other. So only you two, could you please stand and could I invite the best man and principal vice? No, just face me. Yep. So, thank you. Don't mind. Not much to look at. No, no. Yeah. You can just, just leave the computer just then. Thank you. Just as we did at the rehearsal. Okay. <laughs> You can stand closer. <laughs> Again, the, the purpose of that is, is, is so that you both see and hear according to, to the law. Right. Are you ready? Good. Dearly beloved, you have come together here before me, priest of the parish, and in the presence of this community, your family and your friends so that your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with the sacred seal, and that your love be enriched with his blessing, so that you may have strength to be faithful to each other forever and to assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of this church, I ask you now together to state your intentions. Stephen and Kerry ann have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Yes, I have. I have. Thank you. I have. Thank you. Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, to love and honour each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. I am. Thank you. So, would you like to step up as we practice <laughs> and turn into each other? Lovely. Thank you. So, having joined your hands together, Try and not look at me, but look at each other. Yes, yeah, sure. So, Stephen, I'm going to ask you first to repeat after me. I, Stephen Lawrence David Barr. I, Stephen Lawrence David Barr. Take you, Kerry Ann Gilhooley. Take you, Kerry Ann Gilhooley. For my lawful wife. For my lawful wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. For sickness and in health. Till death do us part. For death do us part. So, Kerry Ann, Okay. Just like it. I, Ann Gilhooley. I, Kerry Ann Gilhooley. Take you, Stephen Lawrence David Barr. Take you, Stephen Lawrence David Barr. For my lawful husband. For my lawful husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for po poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Thank you. May the Lord, in his kindness, strengthen this consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfilment his blessing within you for what God joins together that no one put asunder. Mark, thank you. That's great, Mark. That's great. Yeah, right.
May the Lord bless these rings which you will give to each other as a sign of your love and fidelity. So, thumb and forefinger. Which you in there and just with, say to Kenny, with this ring I wed you. With this ring I wed you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Again. This will be difficult. Yeah. And just look at with this ring I wed you. With this ring I wed you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, I want you both. That's it. You may kiss your bride. Can I ask you to stand and we'll leave the newly married Mr. and Mrs. Barr to be seated. Now, the second hymn which they have chosen is number 274. So we'll give you time to look at the number and to open the book. 274. And it's a well known hymn stroke song in the east end of Glasgow. At least the tune is. Thank you, Mark, and joy. Give me joy in my heart. done. I think you've sung it somewhere else before maybe. So would you please stand. We come now to the nuptial blessing. So if the Mr. newly married Mr. and Mrs. Barb would just like to hold hands together. Lovely. Now let us invoke God's blessing upon this bride and groom, Stephen and Kerry Ann, that in his kindness the Lord may favour with his help those on whom he has bestowed this bond of marriage. Holy Father, maker of our world, who created man and woman in your own image, and will that their union be crowned with your blessing. We humbly ask that these, your, this your son and daughter who are joined today in the marriage covenant, may your abundant blessing, Lord, come down upon Carrie Ann, this bride, and upon Stephen, her husband, her companion for life, May the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may be known for their integrity or conduct. In happiness, may they praise you, Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil, and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surrounds them, may they come to the kingdom of heaven. This we ask through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Please be seated. We now will move to the altar with the bridal party and your bouquet and we will complete now the marriage certificate okay
I don't know if you can see the changes that have come over me in these last few days. I've been afraid that I might drift away. So I've been telling old stories, singing songs that make me think about where I came from. That's the reasons why I seem so far away today. Oh, and let me tell you that I love you. That I think about you all the time Caledonia, you're calling me And now I'm going home But if I should become a stranger You know that it would make me more than sad Caledonia's been everything I've ever had Oh, and I have moved Kept on moving. I proved the points that I needed proving. Lost the friends that I needed losing. Found others on the way. Oh, and I have tried and have kept on trying. I've stolen dreams, yes, there's no denying. I have traveled hard with conscience flying somewhere with the Let me tell you that I love you That I think about you all the time Caledonia, you're calling me Now I'm going home If I should become a stranger You know that it would make me more than sad Caledonia's been everything I've ever
Uh, so I need is a mic here. <laughs> Honestly, I know he's a, oh no, I can talk for Scotland. Only when you're standing at a bar. But this is not my forte, believe me. Honestly, this is just not my thing. I'm so nervous, it's unbelievable. But, and it's so professional now. It wasn't like that in my day. We just go on with it and winged it and that. Now we're like, it's like a press conference. I think I'm at, I, I'm thinking I'm at a Tyson Fury fight and that, you know. And see the thing about being at a fight? All the deer seats are at the front. That's the ones that gave the best. See you at the back. He's better start dipping. Because the electricity bills are through the roof now. Anyway, I'd like to welcome you all here today on this very special occasion. My daughter, Marion Stephen Barr, Kerry Ann Gilhooly. She's actually glad to get rid of this name, by the way. Because you didn't say Gilhooly. You just go, G I L H double O L E Y. Now it's quite easy, she go bar. So, um, where am I going for here? I have, honestly, I'm totally winging this because these are my distance glasses. So that I can see the ones up the back that didn't put much in. And I don't know why I keep swapping. And I kid you not, know, oh, this is what I've got, that's a speech. So, um, it's, it's we bullet points, I Welcome the guests. It's been a long time coming. It's been on, it's been off, it's been on, it's been off. And you know what? He's all going to care and I'm going to say a day about running. I've seen that. I've seen them all out there. I knew when the wedding was on. They're all out there, marching up and down. The weight was on, the weight was off, the weight was on, the weight was off. Honestly, I've seen them all. B Craig, Psychopath, everywhere. Driving through Edinburgh, these Edinburgh folk walking about and that says the wedding's back on. <laughs> so whatever I must do here. Now I'd like to thank you all very much for coming here today and uh, <coughs> this lovely setting. And if you, we've got to thank them because I know it's going to be a lovely meal. And um, also thank Father Chambers for the service today. He's absolutely brilliant. He really... He really makes you feel at home. I wish he was here now and came just tugging at me. So I wasn't as nervous and that, but unfortunately, he can't come here today. So um, we'll move on. Memories of Kerry Ann. For goodness sake. I don't know what to say here. It's, it's, it flashed past me, you know what I mean? Um, but obviously, she went to St Mary's Primary School. And then went to St. Kenny Gerns and that bit. Thanks for taking the pressure off you. He's good. He's good. But um, she's done very well and that. I, I don't know if she really stuck in at school and that because. Uh, <laughs> Shirley used to get calls all the time. You're funny, you're funny. funny. <laughs> right? Are you. I did say there would be a heckler in it. I thought it'd be Joe Fannin. <laughs> this is my grandson and that. Honest to God, man. You want the mic killed? You want to be? He's getting bright. You want the mic? Anyway, we move on to Kerry Ann, but um, ah, she was all right at the school and that. Ken, you, got a couple, you got a couple of calls, parents evening and things like that, you know, and you'd go up and Aye, Kerry Ann's been nursing that and chanting that. But you go, no, my Kerry Ann. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. No, my bairn. My bairn wouldn't even do that. And then, oh, aye. How did she try and get PE? You think she would actually do something when she sees her dad out there running. But she's... <laughs> I think she phoned her grand, actually. And says, eh... Uh, she sharted. <laughs> you need to come and get me. I'll follow you through. I mean, oh, unique, by the way, that's unique. That is unique. Um, the things that carry Andy. But, um, and then, no, she didn't. She didn't. She's just done it every week. Every week. So, um, 
I'm trying to think when um, Stephen actually met Kerry Ann. Um, <laughs> the first time, okay, now off, off and on and off and on. That went on and on, apart from COVID, we the wedding, it was off and on and off and on. <laughs> and then I went to Sharon. And you know, I actually, the two daughters were there. Then uh, my daughter made the love of her life. Craig. I'm, I'm, I'm told we came here. I'm told we came here. You know. But there was, um, I don't know how it came about because they weren't together at the time and Kerry Ann was there and Chiran. And I was actually with Stephen. I was actually with Stephen. I don't know how that's come about. Me, Stephen, and uh, a guy called Alan Davy. I don't know if you scare him. Alan Davy. So, um, we were sharing a room. Three of us. They turned into two. Every night. I'm saying, Alan, where's this? Where's the wee man? He says, Gio. Getting his score now. I'm saying, ah, good, good on him. Good on him. Aye, good on him, all right. Yeah, aye. That goes down the street. Then they end up She's this wee guy walking with my arse. Me, Stevie Barry. <laughs> in the street. Posting missing every, every night. He was posting missing. Tell me, ah, oh, Gio. I was too drunk. I couldn't get him. <laughs> you know? But the thing, the thing about that story as well is I says to Alan, you need a phone. You need a phone, the wee man find out where he is. And I don't know if you've been to Chiran. Well, the pubs we went to anyway, it's just a hole. It's a hole in the flare. You just stand there and go like that. It's there to be crouch. I says, ah, Alan, you'll need your phone and find out where the wee man is. He says, Gio, I can't. I says, hey, hang on. He says, my phone's all wet. And I can assure you, it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. So, um, anyway, they met and came in, Craig met. Um, and I'm moving on to, this is my third bullet point. Because that's all I've got. I've got to welcome Stephen to the family. But, see, to be honest, I can't really mind much here when he first came along, you know. But I went home all day. And I come back, and honestly, he was there. He was there. I don't know what happened, but he used to be there. And I think that's the first time I met him. And I'll tell you another wee story about this. Um, she's saying, hurry up, kick me under the table and that. But <laughs> I mind they going to New York, and honestly, Shirley Boat, she didn't get everybody a present and that. And Abercrombie Fitch, pants. <laughs> get them pants. Greenians, greenians, of course. It's going to be green. So she goes three pair. Three pair, one for Stephen, one for me, one for the Burnley. So as time went on, when I come back that holiday, we Stevie's in. So what have we got? Problem, haven't we? Two pair of green pants, Abercrombie Fitch, and the wash machine. Who you see? So I uh, kid you, uh, kid you know, this is true, by the way. Then he moved out, and they got the rainy house. So I'm left with two pair of these pants. That's me. I've got the double. But not only that, Kevin gets a boyfriend. We were there. What's happening, eh? He's got the green pants and all. <laughs> he moves in. That's just what the day nowadays, by the way, is. Nay, no, no big deal to move in. <laughs> so he moves in with his green pants. Same thing. He's like, he doesn't want to wear them. He's, he's dumped them again because he's, they're Jews. So then he moves out. I've got three pair of these up of Tromby Fitch. Pants and uh, I wear them every Celtic Rangers game, by the way. <laughs> Three pair. I only wore them for the treble. Okay, and I've got a pair for the League Cup, the Scottish Cup, and the League. But I had, honestly, I had them worn forever. So they have worn a wee bit thin. You know, a couple of holes in. So there's a pair dumped in there. So we're just doing a double now. Like, I've got the League Cup pair in the, the League. Sorry about that, Nichols. But anyway, um, 
I'd like to welcome Stephen to the family, but he's been here a long time, honestly. It's just unbelievable. Um, so we'll move on to the future, and I just wish them all the best and health and happiness for the future. And uh, I'm just going to cut it short. No, no. I'm not. I've got to hang about the watch, eh? The boom. They said. They said. They've got a present. Got you a present, Dad. I'm shocked, but you pick me up off the flare. Got you a present. This watch. I always said I wanted a nice watch, and that they got me this watch. But I'm not too sure if they bought it or not. Because the can I like to go to the looky looky men in Tenerife. And they're just back for Tenerife. And I'm going to myself. I'm not too sure about this. And then I looked at it and it's a boss. And I think Kerry Ann says, I'm giving that to my dad. Because see, after the day, I'm the boss. <laughs> You'll not need that. So what was my other name on the card? Oh, aye, aye, that's right. Well, did I not say she was gorgeous? I did say that earlier on. She was absolutely gorgeous. But see the thing about Kerry Ann? If you know Kerry Ann, and what's my mum? What's my mum saying? Shut up. Honestly, she's a great friend. Honestly, I always remember uh, a friend of mine saying something like this, but he was right. It was about his wife. If you know Kerry Ann, you've got a friend, and you've got a friend for life. And it proves it here today when uh, I look at the bridesmaids, because we start with Steph, went to nursery with Steph, and she's still here. We've done uh, the school, Rachel, still our friend. And we kind of had a caravan for a long time, and we met these wonderful people from uh, Edinburgh, and she met Emma, and she's got her as a friend. And who's the other one? Who's the, who's the other one? Oh, ah, but she was, she had no choice with Kimi. So she's, but honestly, see my two girls, they're absolutely marvellous. And we all think our families are marvellous, which they are. But see my two girls and the way they work together is just tremendous. And, and, you enjoy your day. Tell me to get off the way. <laughs> and they're all absolutely stunning. Like everybody is. Everybody has made a massive effort. See this? Go on your walks and your wee runs and things like that to get in shape. These have all done great. And honestly, I hope you have a fantastic day, which I'm sure you will. And um, if you'd like to be upstanding, and we'll do a wee toast for uh, Kerry Ann and Stephen Barr. Kerry Ann and Stephen. Oh, I should have said that when I came here. That's me done. Done and dusty. I can't, okay, but everyone, everyone's gone through your heat. What's good? Yay! All right. Cheers, Craig. <laughs> Wolf. Oh, did you pass it? Pass that. Mm. Stephen, you need to clip back. Professional stuff now, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Professional. Press conference. <laughs> right, go. go. Hey, start again. Right, uh, firstly, I'd like to thank everybody for. Oh, that's fine. Uh, thank you all for. Uh, been able to come along and join us today. Um, they can hear me. Can you hear me? That's it. Your dad was chewing on it. No way. Anyway. Covid. Uh, 
<laughs> anyway, anyway, you hear me now. Um, on behalf of my wife and I, uh, I'd like to thank you all for being able to come and join us today. Um, it has been a long time coming, as Gio, the priest, and everybody else points out. <laughs> uh, but I'll get my bit in as well. Um, over two years, and the point is, back then, there would have been a couple of people here uh, the day that can't make it, obviously, the day. So just with that, can I ask that we raise a glass to our absent friends <laughs> and family. So, aye, they welcome him. I was there, Gio, for the start, aye, as you just snuck in the back door, as he casually says there. Uh, I'd like to thank the Bayfies for welcoming into your, your family. Um, for, for day one, it's, it, it's been nothing but... Uh, nothing but... N never a dull moment. Never a, never a dull moment, anyway. Um, I think it's always made it easier being a Celtic man, Burnley. Eh? Uh, we'll not go there. Uh, like I say, it's never been a dull moment, especially with our Gio here, as you heard. Um, I had to take the mic off from there. Um, I mean, for, for day one, met, met Gio and it was just sports constantly. Didn't want to know what was happening. Just uh, walked into the house, it was golf. It was fat bar, basically stunned beside Hugh Keevans here. <laughs> then, then we had the poker, which gave him his due. He's quite lucky with that, quite jammy, he's done all right. Paid for the whole thing. <laughs> uh, then, then we had the fishing, which uh, Burnley and Kami got him a wee membership for. Oh, a couple of grand, like, how many salmon you caught? None. None. <laughs> Aye, still, still waiting on a couple of salmon, but uh, better go to Morrison's. Uh, no, but it has, it has always been very welcoming for you, and I do appreciate everything you have done for me and Kerry Ann, and especially on the, the lead up to this. Uh, me and Kerry Ann are forever grateful, and I only hope I can repay that by looking after our family, Caleb and Kerry Ann. And anybody else? Maybe. <clears throat> I'd like to thank my mum and dad for the, the upbringing that you's, you's gave me and the love that you shown me. Um, that's never been an easy situation for, for me if, to come here today and then we've got me coming for fair lady well. <laughs> and no being able to lift the cutlery. <laughs> no, but they've, they've been ever, forever keeping tabs when I was younger and there are a few guys that know what it was like try to stay away ducking and diving for your man and dad and now, now having Caleb I know what it's like and, and uh, I just imagine when he's older he wants to stay with his, go and stay with his pals and, and uh, <laughs> when he says I'm going to stay with my mates tonight I'm going, no he doesn't. He? He's got a bottle of 2020 <laughs> and he's in a field with a tent and there's about 20 of them. But no, again, I do appreciate everything that you have done for me. Um, and it's, it's led me here today and I, I will be forever grateful. And just, just on the back of that, can I just ask Mark to see uh, the, t the two mothers and maybe give Gio a wee something and all there. I'm He's got his watch. So with, uh, with, with leading up to the day, I just want to also mention 
the bridesmaids and what a, what a job they've done for Kerry Ann in keeping our, our, our nerves to a minimum and our stress levels, which I know more than anybody were through the roof, especially when me, Gio, and Burnley are sitting tanning a keg <laughs> last night. And then just to add, this isn't even a party, but uh, Gio stick me in last night and all that I was drinking a whiskey. <laughs> I could have kept that one. Um, so I, you have been, you have been great, especially they look beautiful. I'm sure you all agree, and their green dresses especially. Yeah, uh, I just actually want to give Kimi a wee special mention, um, just for everything that she's done for Kerry and the build up to it. And it wasn't always like this. I mean, we had pots and pans gate. Uh, that was, uh, well, I was used to it by then, to be honest, but it was Burnley's first experience uh, in the Gahuli household. Me and him sitting watching the football and the two sisters are meant to be making dinner. And it was like World War Three through there. Hitting each other with pans. And uh, Burnley turned around and says, what, do you, what should we do? I says, just leave them to it, mate. <laughs> so sure enough, Kerry Ann won. Thank. <laughs> no. Well, we'll call it a draw. <laughs> uh, it, was a, it was a draw, aye. And uh, me and Burnley phoned a Chinese. <laughs> yeah. So aye, since then though, they've 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 come and looked leaps and bounds. To be honest, <laughs> they've they've had the. Uh, Kimmy's been there for Kerry Ann. She has got a lot to live up to once it's hers like that enough, but I'll go into hiding. Um, <laughs> no, but you've been you've been great, Kimmy. Thanks for that. Um, I had a wee bit about the, the groomsman here today. I don't think I'm gonna actually read it out after the performance there. Nah, he's done well. Um, Appreciate that, he's all turning up in time and putting your suit, your, your kilts and all that on. And uh, honestly, the, the, the best thing about it is my stag do was uh, invite me into the Orange Lodge. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and just a wee special mention to Caleb the Page Boy. And our two flower girls, Addison and Leighton. Whee! I was going to say, I've done great, you'll get sweeties, but I see he's a wired right into that. <laughs> so, on to Kerry Ann, my beautiful bride. <laughs> Being up here, I feel so lucky with everybody here that we, we asked along to be able to make this, to see your special day. And um, I've never been prouder. And watching you for the last 10 years, getting to know some of the amazing stuff about you and what, what, we've, what we've done, I could, I'm uh, never prouder. And especially when Caleb comes along and you think, <laughs> ah! <laughs> you've, you, you think, you think you've, you've cracked it and then Caleb came along and things just, they, they kind of get much better. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Name here. <laughs> <laughs> but watch, watching Kerry Ann, the build up to this has been unbelievable. I mean, the organising that you've done for it, uh, then they do much to be fair. I got the kilts. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the fact that like, you set all the dates, all the appointments, picking up the stuff. And then you've got in amongst it, like, being a full-time mum, with Caleb working for, working for him, trying to juggle all that. And then, uh, trying, like, basically living at the gym for two months as well, eh? Who was his mum then? Huh? Who was his mum then? Aye, oh, aye, well. 
Jeg tænker bare, jeg tænker bare med det, Jim. Eh, no, but honestly, again, it makes me proud to be standing up here as your husband. For, the first time, first time I met Kerry Ann was actually at my best man's uh, wedding eve. Uh, oh, no. when, she, when she turned up that night and uh, we just, I don't know what she was doing there to be honest with you. <laughs> now that I think about it. What's that, what was actually happening that night? <laughs> uh, but she was there with, with Hayley who had turned up as well there. I think they were just wishing Mark well and got a blender with her. And that was the first time, never thought much yet. And then since then we met at a Unfortunately, our, our second meeting, and that's where I say unfortunately, it was at my, one of my good mate Barry's funeral, but also that's where I met the bull Geo. And a uh, couple of questions was... Daddy, I don't like your speaker. This, <laughs> oh, I know, I know, me too. It was like the Spanish Inquisition. When Geo first came up, he was actually standing with my dad, that's how in cahoots we are, we're like gypsies here. <laughs> He's all the caravans. Uh, Gio was, Gio came, up, Gio came up to me and I was just kind of, he goes, do you know who I am? <laughs> like Conor McGregor. <laughs> I said, uh, nah, you're Kerry Ann's uh, da. And he went, aye, am I? And what's your intentions with my daughter? <laughs> And I said, I, said so, I literally just got her number. I said, probably take out the pictures or something. Well, Gio, after 10 years, here's my answer. Uh, I'd just like to, before I pass you on to my, my best, best man, Mark, which I'd just to turn the mic off, to be honest with you. Uh, he's, he's uh, me and Mark's been to, we were in nursery together. And ever since then, excuse my language, he's been taking the piss out of me. <laughs> so I don't expect anything less. But remember, Never let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> That's where we like today. So I just hand you over to, to Mark and I appreciate that. Thanks very much, Stephen. Thanks very much. I'll let you sit down. <coughs> Please. Kerry, I just want to say some of the nice things Stephen was saying about you, he actually used to say them about me, so <laughs> just watch yourself. He's obviously full of shit, all right? Fucking prick. You're pressed past the thing. So before I get started, I actually prepared a few things, so if I could just get everybody to reach under their seats. I've actually prepared a wee surprise. <laughs> right, good, right, good. That's really good. <laughs> Bastards. Thought I had Mary's. So I actually wrote this speech a couple of years ago when they were originally supposed to get married, but there's obviously been a lot of changes since then, so I've had to amend it, but obviously one of the biggest changes, the pandemic, which everybody knows about. Um, the Rangers won their first title, which was good. <laughs> first, first one in the bag, that turned out to 55. <laughs> Uh, I, I, the biggest shock for me over the last couple of years was uh, Burnley got pubes, <laughs> finally. <laughs> and I just, I never seen it coming, to be fair. But the good thing about Burnley's pubes is they all grow on his face, so you can't miss them. <laughs> um, I wrote this and I knew how good it was going to be. I pre-wrote this, but I knew how good it was going to be. But I just wanted to say how good the chapel was, eh? Like, I love all that stuff. See, like, the Jesus stuff and that and going in and <laughs> blessing yourself and that. It was beautiful when I, I loved it. But 
I really do hope all the part-time Catholics that were in go to... <laughs> There's a few of you, alright? I hope he's... I hope he's got your Catholic loyalty points up before Sunday, all right? As you can see on Sunday, oh, I was at a chapel on Friday, I was saying to the big man, but the thing that threw me the most was on the way out, I did notice Big Stu uh, doing, talking to the Lord, and he's, he's not very quiet, Stuart, but he did say to him, big man, if you just do it on Sunday, I'll stop cheering when Scott scores. <laughs> so you know it's serious game when, when he's, he's willing to do that, all right? But one thing I do know is you'd be hard pushed to beat Stephen's Catholic law at points, all right? That, that boy's never away from the chapel, ain't you know? You're first name terms with a big man, ain't you? Not a big man, big man. He's only got one name, God, obviously. Uh, but he knows all the wee bits. See, everybody looks at a Cairn and do all the return to the father and that. He knows all the wee bits already, so you can tell he's well in there. I was actually thinking, mate, just an idea. Um, have you ever thought about getting one of the big, like, Virgin Mary tattoos on your back. <laughs> See, like the rosary beads, like the horn. See, like the horn, the rosary beads. Oh, you've, already, you've already got one, right? Sorry. Okay. I should have known that, to be fair. Um, obviously, Stephen and Gio have already touched on it, but I just want to say everybody looks brilliant today. No, no, that, I'm not shocked at that. Obviously, these are all good looking. Most of these are good looking anyway, but these have all really scrubbed up really well. But one thing I did notice was. Um, they were filming the undateables outside, so they've actually... <laughs> they've actually come in and asked me if I could grab a couple of these, all right? So, if I do talk to you after this, then just come with me, mate. Just come with me, right? um, Can you see him at the back, all right? Aye, sorry. Should have asked that for the start. Sorry. Is that closer? Is that better? I, I just thought like, Gio was off you. Well, my name's Gio. Gio! Go with me. Go with me. Obviously, you are still important. Just no as important as right, the front row. Yeah, right. Now, some of you are probably looking about the room now thinking, how the fuck did I get an idea invite? I hardly know the boy, but there's a few reasons. We spoke about it then. You've either played football with Stephen once, at least once in the last 30 years, right? A couple of tables years. Or you've offended Kerry Ann the least since the first lockdown, right? So if you've not played football with Stephen, you're not as offensive as you think. <laughs> All right. Um, now, I know a couple of... Sorry, I should have mentioned this for the start. I know there's a couple of people for Stephen's side that are on day release. <laughs> I'll get through this as quick as I can. There's buffet and that. You'll get, before he's get picked up, we'll get his through. All right. Um, I actually just would like to take... I know when he's already touched on this, but I, I, I would like to just take a wee moment to think of the ones that, that are new here, whereas the day, um, no, sorry, no, the deed folk, just <laughs> the ones that were invited to the first wedding, <laughs> that weren't invited to, some of them were invited to the second, and then weren't invited to the third, so. <laughs> you know, how, how in order must you have been to get uninvited to a wedding? <laughs> over lockdowns and hardly seen it, so fair play to them. Still take their cards away, eh? we'd take their <laughs> cards uh, I've actually got a bit of a confession. You could probably tell I was a wee bit nervous about standing up, but I've never actually been to a gypsy wedding before, so, <laughs> so there is loads of things I'm not sure about. Like, somebody tried to grab me earlier on, I'm not sure, is this a thing grabbing? It's just a grabbing thing. Uh, but if somebody tries to sell you something, just take it, just fucking take it. It's, don't, don't make a mistake. Uh, a couple of housekeeping rules that I want to go through. Maybe I should have started with these, but we're actually legally obliged to let all the females in here know that Ryan Nichols is going to try and shag you. All right? <laughs> it's, it's a known fact. He will. <laughs> so we've, not, we've normally got a wee cone hang for him, but... They couldn't get a wee tartan one, so we've just let them take the call. Now, originally when I wrote this joke, I wrote that I'm sorry we had to put him at the table with the least shaggable folk, but, <laughs> but he sat me my wife, so I fit to, but that's, obviously that didn't, we need to go down a storm. So Alex actually said to me, you need to take a fucking nickel joke. 
I'll take some out of it. Uh, the other housekeeping rule, I think this is a bit of an obvious one, but if Gio starts talking to you about the hybrid, how many miles he gets to the gallon, <laughs> personal best, running, all that shit, just, just talk to him, all right? If no for Stephen and Kenny, and date for me, because I always get stuck with him, all right? Just entertain him, just chat away to him. He's probably already been on your Strava, he's checked it. So don't try and pretend you, oh, I had it. He knows when you pause it, don't you? You know, somebody pauses, oh, you've paused that. That's not a real thing. Um, if he is getting too much, then here's a wee tip that I do. Just ask him what, he's, uh, what channel it defaults to when he puts on his dodgy box. <laughs> I'll give you a clue, it rhymes me, horn. <laughs> Don't, you've had, you've had just... <laughs> favourites, sorry, favourites. It's probably Bernie. That is Shagger. Aye, aye, old Shagger, aye. So I did actually, like, we never wanted to say to Kerry Ann, but I did actually let Stephen hear some of my speech just to put his mind at ease because he was a wee bit worried about me slagging folk, which I don't normally do, but... Um, so he's asked me to take, he's asked me to take a couple of stories out. So I've not mentioned anything about him spending a big chunk of his bonus at strippers in Liverpool. <laughs> and my stag do obviously that get much. Jamie, I've not mentioned you phoning Shannon at the strippers on Stephen's stag do <laughs> to apologise for seeing boobs. I'll take that out, and I've definitely to leave out the story about Stephen kissing Kerry Ann's cousin. <laughs> Which I never knew about, but I'll know certain. Shelley probably won't even remember anyway, so. <laughs> I can't even remember. <laughs> so, I've actually, Stephen's already alluded, I've actually spent most of my life tormenting and harassing Stephen between multiple fake birthdays, birthday cakes, sorry, at restaurants and getting folk to sing happy birthday. That, that was quite a good one. Uh, and I had a couple of phones fully pictures of you in the toilet, didn't I? That seemed to be a thing we went through as well. Uh, I love you, but I, I, I hope you truly understand how much I've enjoyed making your life a misery. Um, I think dressing you up as a member of the flute band for your stag day, that was maybe a wee bit too far, eh? maybe. In hindsight, in hindsight. So, Stephen Lawrence Patrick David Barr, <laughs> named after all the potential fathers. <laughs> Some people know him as Guppy, after Steve Guppy, that's for the football ones. JK Barr, because he's, he's obviously bad drinking in that. <laughs> Skiddy Barr, you should probably ask him about that one. That's Kerry Ann would probably tell you she does his washing. <laughs> uh, Stephen with a PH, I think it's pronounced Stephen. <laughs> Stephen. Um, but he actually, this didn't catch on for long, but he actually stepped in shite once when <laughs> when we were at a, like a Celtic rebel festival, and for years, everybody called him Jobby Sands. <laughs> <laughs> Jobby Sands MP, they had to get the MP, so it wasn't sectarian, but Jobby Sands. So I, I liked that one, if that catches again, I quite liked that one. <laughs> Stephen and I first met when we went to nursery, um, and obviously if you look at how young you look, no, sorry, I did write that in the original speech, you've let yourself go a wee bit, but. <laughs> Pre-COVID, he looked, he still looked really young, so if you could just imagine, imagine him in nursery, right? He was just really wee and squeaky and shiny and that. And I actually thought he was like a wee cabbage patch doll and, <laughs> until I seen him getting breastfed, which was really weird. But it was his dad dropped him off, so that's... I can't even see that, to be fair. All right. Uh, we never went to the same primary school. Stephen obviously went to a big Catholic school. He went between St Andrews and Cedar Bank. Uh, <laughs> and I went to Toronto, just up the road, non-denomination, obviously that stuff, right? But we still spent a lot of time together, didn't we? Outside school, playing football and drinking with his grand and that, so <laughs> we did spend a lot of time. But then we did go to secondary school together, united the clans, the Catholics and that, back together. <laughs> um, but you could probably tell with the folk that Stephen's invited, that he wasn't really the most popular in school, were you? <laughs> he, was, he, was he, he was the type of boy that used to walk about school with his crucifix with his jumper. <laughs> like one of the guys. Like you'd see him in all the photos of that. 
with the crucifix and that, but just had, his man that had money, they could afford a crucifix. Um, we were in the same Reggie class, which was obviously a bonus. We were in the same Reggie class, so they used to take it. Uh, but that didn't actually last that long because obviously Stephen was quite, quite daft. So <laughs> once we got into sort of third and fourth year, I'm quite blessed with, with brains. Um, <laughs> Stephen used to eat chalk <laughs> and, put, and put daisies up his nose, which is, which is quite fair. So what Stephen done is, rather than being class, he spent a lot of time in bass, which is, it's like a wee, it's like a wee safe zone for mad wings, right? He used to usher them in, just like a wee safe zone. So there wasn't like any tests or like homework or that, just hundreds of like DVDs and that, wasn't there? And lick, licking envelopes. He used to get me lick envelopes and stuff. Um, and milk them. He used to get milk the teachers and that. Um, so because of Stephen's behavioural issues at school, what they used to do is they used to make him keep a diary, right? So that when he went to his therapist and that, they could talk about like how his week, how his weeks. So I've actually got a copy of one of his diaries. Um, his mum obviously knew that I was best man. She said, I think it's only fitting that I give you one of Stephen's diaries, right? So I've actually got it and I brought it with me. What's the chances, right? So obviously Stephen's diary, right? Stephen's diary. So, Quite a pop in there. Stephen Barr, two, S2B diary. Stephen loves Antoinette. <laughs> Guessing to never bought it because she's not here. She's not here. Or she's offended Kerry Ann, one of the two. She played football with you though. She did. She did leave you for me. She did buy me a watch, to be fair. All right, you read my speech. That's it. So I've actually, I've actually picked out a short story for, for Stephen's diary. I thought, um, I'll obviously leave out the lassie's surname because that's, that's no right to put the lassie's surname. But if you know, you know. If you know her first name, you know. If you know Stephen, you know who she is. Um, this was actually written about his big plans for going camping. So it's funny you mentioned camping earlier. So this must be true because you've already mentioned camping, all right? So I'll just read it word for word. I've told my mum I'm staying at Mark's, but really, me, him, and Downey, that's the boy's surname, we know that, brutal, um, we're camping out with some lassies and a bottle of Merry Down. I've been saving my lunch money all week, although Mark keeps tapping me one pound. I've got my eye on Donna. She's just so funny with her fiery red hair and her, and her glazed eyes, kind of like the lights are on, but nobody's home. I wouldn't mind nobody being home when I get my wee stubby hands on her. Uh, I'm, just, I'm trying to read his writing here. I've got my good Ben Sherman shirt and my pro star denim jacket already looked out. And I'll have two extra sprays of his miyake wounding my boxers. Lassies love that. <laughs> I wish I had Mark's cop, but this is... <laughs> You're embarrassed reading this bit here. I wish I had Mark's confidence. He can just take his pick. I hope he doesn't pick Donna though, that would break my heart. He already stole my last girlfriend who I loved. She even got my watch for his birthday. See, we're matching up, that's me. Fingers crossed I can at least feel Donna's boobs without getting too excited again. Can't believe I had to sit down until everyone left the last time. So it's good. It's good to get a wee insight in the mind of Stephen. It's not a lot of people get that. We then went on to work together in Shoe, didn't we, Stephen, after I was in the army. I, d I didn't put this in my speech, I didn't want to bring it up because it was about bit order, but when I was going on tour with the army, I was going over to Baghdad. I was only just turning 18 and Stephen said to me, listen, mate, I hope you get shot. <laughs> Fuck, thanks, best mate. He says, no, no, just so you can get home sooner. So you can get home sooner. Can I? Just... Cheers. In the leg, sorry, I missed that. Right? Sorry, oh, cheers in the leg. So we actually we actually worked together at Shoe, didn't we? Which uh, which I thought would be brilliant, working with your best pal, kind of your gaffer, know your gaffer. But Stephen at Shoe and Stephen your pal are two different folk. He's he's a wee bit of a prick in work, to be fair. <laughs> no, I don't think he's invited anybody for his work, so I can't get anybody to back us up. But he's a wee bit of a dick in his work, all right. Uh, but I never lasted long your work because I used to draw on all the shelves, didn't I? So I used to get my parker and write Stephen Bar Shags Dugs on all the shelves. <laughs> 
which I think is still there, and still there, and they're still there. So I get folks saying, "You just shag dogs." I'm like, you "Never seen them by a dog, have you?" It's <laughs> been that. Uh, so we obviously grew up, as you can probably tell, we were mad shaggers, and that we? we were. Fucking, he'd shag in at one point, eh? Like I had standards, obviously, Stephen. At one point, no any more. Like, he's got standards now, eh? Uh, total fanny magnets, I'd say we were, eh? <laughs> fanny magnets. Eh? People actually used to call us fannies, which I know was short for fanny magnets. I know, it's like an abbreviation, eh? Fan There's fannies, and I'm like, oh, fanny magnets. I'm like, no, 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 okay. uh, but we actually used to do this thing, and as I was writing this, I still couldn't figure out why we'd done this, right? But when we used to go out to places like Club Earth, and you'll know Club Earth, um, we used to bump into boys like Aaron, who I know is here, which is good because he'll back me up for this, right? <laughs> so we used to bump into folk like Aaron and we used to kiss on the lips, didn't we? <laughs> which is really weird. Like, we used to kiss with, like, tongues and that. <laughs> I would, but just, like, why did we do that? That's weird. The reason I was writing that is, like, why did we kiss on the lips? For, for ages, we did do that. People wonder why you lost your vision at 24. Eh, hey, that's such a... So I actually had the pleasure of Stephen being my best man at my wedding, which is obvious choice, we've only really got two pals, but um, <laughs> Stephen, to be fair, like, your speech in comparison to mine's was, like, the day was brilliant. Um, at, at my wedding, he got a wee bit nervous. He was still quite young at that point. So he slipped away and drank half a bottle of whiskey, I think it was, eh? just, just starting to take the edge off, wasn't it? Um, but when it was your turn to do the speech, like you stood up your paper upside down, like that. <laughs> upside down, and I corrected you, I'm like, Stephen, I turned it around the wrong way. But you just winged it, didn't you? You just ended up winging it, steaming, just toasting everybody, like that, toasting, like six or seven times. I'd like to raise a groom with the toasting bride and that. I was to like toasting. I had to like tug his wee skirt and sit down, Stephen, you know, right? Um, and then it wasn't until you sat down and you put your paper down, I realised it was actually his booking. It was his hotel booking he had. It wasn't even a speech. Just looked at it, it was like room for uh, Stephen Barr. I'm like, that's um, So I, I think it's time to get a, a wee bit more serious now. Um, I know, it's been a first day. Stephen actually met the love of his life, um, feels like a lifetime ago. And, and, I suppose I was, or I am fortunate enough to call her a friend of mine as well. Um, when he first brought her into our sort of social circle, it was quite weird to get over a weird accent, but he just kind of took to it. Um, then obviously she had to win over his, his mum and dad. Um, but for whatever reason, things didn't work out with her and Stephen. And then he met, and then he met Kerry Ann. Um, which, which was great. And, and, and she's been really good to him. Um, like, I, I know, no, certainly no, he wouldn't have traded her for anybody else in the world. Um, she does wee things like she'll check his phone for him. All the time, she'll just <laughs> check his phone. And she'll sit and go through it, just make sure all his apps and that are up to date. Um, like, she'll get him to answer his phone on loudspeaker, just... So he doesn't then have to go and tell her the same story, so... Um, but she doesn't tell you she's there, so... Until you say something like, all right, Shagger, I'm, you know I'm here, eh, so... Um, she also keeps him right when he's telling stories, so... As I'm sure some of you will know, when Stephen gets a few drinks, then he likes to tell a wee story. Um, but she does this... Kerry Ann, sorry, she... Kerry Ann does this random thing, which I'm sure she does with everybody in here, and she'll be talking to you, and she'll be like... And you know it's made up, because she'll always start it off with... So, Mark, um, what's, uh, what, what's your mass saying about all that pr President Putin stuff? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? But you can see her eye watching Stephen, you can see her ear watching Stephen. <laughs> so by the time you figure out what she's actually talking about and you go to answer her, she'll turn around and say, No, you never, Stephen. <laughs> no, you never. Tell him the truth. You spewed on your own car leaving Mark's house. <laughs> Fucking asshole. I hate him. She'll say, I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> true. But uh, me and Kerry Ann actually, actually worked together. Um, we worked at the centre, didn't we? We worked at the centre, which was good. Um, she used to go home greeting every day, which was... <laughs> because of Stuart. Stuart used to make her go home greeting. <laughs> every day, but 
We didn't even want the same show. That's how good Stuart is at making folk greet. Didn't even work for the same company, but sure enough, every home greeting. <laughs> uh, but then we worked together at McDonald's Hotels, didn't we? Um, and, oh shit, I've lost my place there. So she actually went on her first date with Stephen when we worked together at McDonald's Hotels, didn't you? Which was, uh, which was nice. Um, she never really knew Stephen back then, so she gave him the benefit of the doubt and thought, a couple of days after they'd been in the date, he'll text me back, wouldn't he? I'm like, ah, he'll get rid of it, he'll text me back. But she was starting to panic. She was starting to really sweat, more than normal. <laughs> So I wanted to break ice a wee bit, didn't I? So what I'd done is I'd wrote a client's name on a post-it note, but I put Stephen's number under it, and I put it on a screen. I said, carry on that boy's phone, Jay, for this company. Would you phone him back? So she phoned the number, she's like, hello, it's Kerry Ann from McDonald's Hotels. <laughs> Stephen's like, eh? Hello, it's Kerry Ann from McDonald's Hotels. And Stephen's like, fuck it, and who hung up first, you? So, to be fair, if you can withstand me as a pal and get through things like that, then I'm more than confident that you're going to have a long and happy life together, all right? And I love you both. I've no wrote that in. Yeah, I do love you both, all right? I've got a few suggestions, though, that might help you out, all right? First one, Stephen, just as you tell, all right? <laughs> Kerry Ann will always win. Her cycle mode is much more effective than your wee greeting face, all right? Second one, Stephen, be me like Burnley. I think that's a given. <laughs> be me like Burnley. He's a favourite. You know, you'll never be a favourite, but be me like Burnley. <laughs> Stay out the daily record. That goes with it's saying. I'll we'll skip that one. <laughs> the most important one, I think, is, is obviously look at this top table. Like, look at your mas and dads. Look at them for a bit of inspiration. That's what a long, and hap that's, well, that's what a long marriage looks like, all right? <laughs> Obviously, you don't need to do the dogging at the caravan stuff in that. Like, that's totally up to yourself. Keys in the bowl, that's totally up to yourself. So, I'll not put you through any more, all right? If I could just get everybody to upstand. And I hope you will join me in a toast, raising the new Mr. and Mrs. Barr. Oh, you see me the way I think. That girl. Makes me want to be better Took her down Bleecker Street So she drank the way I drink And I kissed the sky To send the blue away Makes me want to be a better man Yeah, and should she see fit Gonna treat her like a real man can She's fearless, she's free Is a real live wire And that girl She's got me feeling so much better Oh, you trade all the money in the world Just to see This a girl No, why? 
She'll make you feel so much better Oh, that girl Makes me want to be a better man Gonna treat her like a real man can face so much in love you're alone in this place like there's nobody else in the world I was enough for her not long ago I was her number one she told me so and she still means the world to me just so you know so be careful when you Hold my girl Time changes everything Life must go on I'm not gonna stand in your way I loved her first I held her first And a place in my heart Will always be hers From the first breath she breathed When she first smiled at me That she'd find you someday But it's still hard to give her away I loved her first How could that beautiful woman with you Be the same freckle-faced kid that I knew 
One did I read all those fairy tales too And tucked into bed all those nights And I knew the first time I saw you with her It was only a matter of time I loved her first I held her first And a place in my heart will always be hers From the first breath she breathed When she first smiled at me I knew the love of a father runs deep And I prayed that she'd find you someday but it's still hard to give her away I loved her first From the first breath she breathed When she first smiled at me I knew the love of a father runs deep Someday you might know what I'm going through when a miracle smiles up at you I loved her Stop moving like you're running out of time The realization coming over your mind That it should be a kind of If you could just find the answer You know it could be a kind of If you're just a wee bit less of a wanker More than half of the time This is the beginning of the rest of your life You better start grafting cause you're running out of time The roof is on fire and it's raining outside But it should be a kind of If you could just find the answer you know it could be a kind of If you're just a wee bit less of a wanker More than half of the time Because the hardest part of the game Isn't even playing the game It's caring enough to care about the things that you do Oh, it's so we cry and shake Here comes the rain This is the beginning of the rest of your life Start crafting cause you're running out of time The roof is on fire and it's raining outside But it should be a kind of If you can just find the answer You know it could be a kind of If you're just a wee bit less of a wanker More than half of the time It's no easy, they tell you that it's hard They tell you it's impossible to mend a broken heart The lead role in a tragedy, pretending that it's hard It's hard to see the finish when you don't know where to start I could write a stanza and put you in a song Detail all the times and you were right and I was wrong 
Flashbacks to the only place I felt like I belong You'll never be a king when you're acting like a pawn Because the hardest part of the game Isn't even playing the game Is caring enough to care about playing the game Oh, it's only crying shame Jump. What? 